Hello everybody, and welcome to Echoes of the Past. I'm Nick Demby, your host, and today we'll be covering James Madison. James Madison was one of the founding fathers of the United States, and he played a crucial role in shaping the nation's early development. Madison was born on March 16, 1751 in Port Conway, Virginia, and grew up on a plantation in Orange County. Madison's intellectual prowess and dedication to public service earned him the nickname Father of the Constitution. James Madison's home, Montpelier, is located near Orange, Virginia. The property covers approximately 2,650 acres of land and includes the mansion, gardens, and numerous outbuildings. Madison inherited the property from his father and expanded and refined it over the years. Montpelier showcases the architectural style of the late 18th and early 19th centuries, reflecting Madison's refined taste. Madison had a passion for French architecture, as well as inspirations of Greek and Roman architecture. The mansion itself is a two-story brick structure with neoclassical design elements. The interiors feature period furniture, artwork, and personal belongings that offer insight into Madison's life and times. Apart from the mansion, Montpelier also includes various outbuildings such as a kitchen, smokehouse, stables, and slave quarters. These structures provide a glimpse into the working of a plantation and the lives of the enslaved people who lived and labored there. The bricks itself of Montpelier were actually built by enslaved children of the time. Up to the ages of nine, these children would work the dirt and soil to create bricks, which then they would put into a kiln. And there's actually fingerprints that can be seen on James Madison's Montpelier to this day. It's a stark reminder of our history and a lesson that should not be easily forgotten. Madison served as the fourth president of the United States from 1809 to 1817. His presidency was marked by challenges, including the War of 1812 against Great Britain. Despite the initial setbacks, Madison's leadership ultimately led to a favorable resolution and an enhanced sense of national identity. Madison's most significant contribution was his leadership in drafting and promoting the United States Constitution. He played a pivotal role during the Constitutional Convention of 1787 and was instrumental in the development of the Virginia Plan, which laid the foundation for the new government structure. Madison also co-authored the Federalist Papers with Alexander Hamilton and John Jay, which argued for the ratification of the Constitution. Yesterday, I was able to sit down with Zeb Gray, the historical team lead at the House, James Madison's Montpelier, and asked him some questions. So, and you were saying, um, so there was a, a lot of political turmoil right there. Do you during the time of James Madison, do you think that um, that's probably one of the biggest takes, takeaways is how he navigated that time period? Maybe Absolutely. something we could take away today? I was just, yes. Right. He was a good listener. He was smart. Uh, he didn't he didn't tear people down personally. Right. But uh, he would meet them halfway, and he was always there. And, uh, and, and to share ideas and then share different perspectives and he changed his mind an example being he and Jefferson both were opposed to the National Bank and this was a, a, a Alexander Hamilton idea in the first term of Washington they thought it was against the Constitution oh it's just the worst thing they could come up with a National Bank All right but by the time Madison is in office, he realizes, you know what, I got this war thing going on. There was a lot of debt. Everything's way out of balance. He, he, he re-upped it. He wow. Thought, well, and Jefferson didn't open his mouth. Really? Now, and I can't help but look today. This is so important. The first week, July 1798, Madison and Jefferson were sitting right here. And they were looking at those mountains. Really? Watching thunderstorms dropped bolts onto those mountains there and that was emblematic to them what was happening in the nation because right. John Adams had signed into law this new law from Congress the Sedition Act if you speak out against your government they'll throw you in jail and it passed and they did they throw you in jail in a wow second. yeah and Madison and Jefferson risk takers they wrote what's called the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions Jefferson wrote the Kentucky Resolution saying, if it's unconstitutional, the state does not have to abide to it. They can nullify the that, that aspect oh, wow. of the law. Right. Nullify, oh wow, he didn't sign it because that would have been treasonous. But Mad uh, Madison was definitely terrified in those, before he died, that this sectionalism was gonna break this country apart. I imagine. Yeah. Wow. So, um, 
So, you know, it sounds like Madison definitely had an appreciation of history, though, from, you know, what, you know, the things that he kind of drew from. And do you think that that kind of influenced how he yes. went about his political career? Absolutely. They read from the Greeks and the Romans. They had the, right. the, the, the Athenian democracy, and they learned about republics from Socrates and Aristotle and Plato. But then moving into the Roman Empire, a man named Cicero heavily affected him, mm -hmm. particularly John Adams. Uh, and Cicero talked about how fragile republics were and that you had to have virtue to have a republic, but you had to have personal virtue first. You had to get over, you had to sort that out for yourself before you can uh, do it for a nation. There's a great quote from John Adams. This is in April of 1776. I mean, we've been at war for a year now. Right. We don't have a declaration of independence yet, but John Adams writes to a woman named Mercy Warren. We are, we are engaged in the best cause ever employed by the human heart, yet the prospect of success is doubtful, not for want of power or of wisdom, but of virtue. Wow. Yeah, right. You know, it's supposed to speak, these columns speak to the, the right. ideals of a republic, these virtues, temperance and prudence and courage and all that good stuff. But I just heard a podcast recently so the real architectural style for the American Republic should be a pyramid and the people at the bottom. That's the foundation right. of, of who we are, not this. Right. But so it's good conversation. Definitely. There's a great book over here called uh, Plain Honest Men. Uh, it's the, really the organic sausage making of the Constitution. It's okay. Like blow by blow. It's fascinating. We'll I pick recommend it up. that one Definitely. very much. Yeah. And if you have any other questions, you email me. Yes, or sir. Uh, book, you know, which book, whatever. Definitely. That'd be good. I appreciate it. I wish you time. good luck, man. Yeah, All the best you, to you.